Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I'm going to be showing you kind of a trick or a hack on how you can burn wood without fire, without using a flame. This is such a fun way to burn wood and for those of you who love that rustic farmhouse decor, this is going to be something that I start incorporating a bit into the content here on my channel, is adding some of that burnt wood into some of my DIYs and I love the look of burnt wood. I mean, who does it? But who wants to work with a flame and actually burn wood? One, it's dangerous and two, you could burn yourself and I've had enough hot glue burns that I don't need any burns caused by flame. So I'm kind of out on that part, but I love this hack. And this is one that is going to give us the same look, the same feel, the same uh, texture, I guess, as burning wood with fire. So I can't wait to show you this hack on how you can burn wood without fire. So let me quit my gabbin. Let's jump into it and let's burn some wood today without fire. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. What are you going to need to burn wood without fire? Mm -hmm. Some ammonium chloride. This is very safe to work with. I would not be bringing it to you if it wasn't. Kids, do not do this without your parents. You can find this one pound ammonium chloride on Amazon for about $9, which is great because one pound goes a long way. You're never going to run out of ammonium chloride. You're going to be burning wood for days. I'm going to be using this paintbrush cup. You can get this at the Dollar Tree by Crafter Square. What I love about it is the lid on it. To make this, I'm going to make a half a batch. So I'm going to use a half a cup of water to one full tablespoon of ammonium chloride. If you want to make a full batch, you're going to do one cup of water to two tablespoons of ammonium chloride. You're going to want to mix it real well, get that ammonium good and dissolved. Once it's good and dissolved, I'm going to go ahead and replace my lid. And again, this lid is perfect for this because it has the flap on the top that makes it accessible for the paintbrush. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Starting off, I'm going to show you some of the mistakes, the mishaps that I ran into that I made when doing this so you can see how I learned from my experiences. I had this box in my stash from Dollar Tree and I thought that the wood cutout would look really cool if it was burnt. So taking a thinner paintbrush is what you're going to want to use for this. You want to use a paintbrush because you're just going to paint this ammonium chloride mixture onto whatever area it is that you want to burn. And so in my case, I thought, okay, this is going to look amazing burnt. I've already got the cutout in the outline of it. This is going to be easy. So I went ahead and just painted on the ammonium chloride. And when you do this, you don't want to be super generous with the water. You don't want to saturate that brush and kind of slather it on there. You want to be light-handed. You want to put the water on sparingly or the ammonium chloride on sparingly because you're putting this onto wood. So when you're painting water onto wood, water tends to seep through the grains of the wood. And when doing that, if you put too much on, you're going to get that ammonium chloride in areas that you don't want the wood to burn. And so that was kind of one of those things that I learned through doing this and so I went ahead and I applied the ammonium chloride onto this inner part of the cutout which is the house. Next I'm going to be using my handy heating tool. I love this thing. Got it at Joann's half off at the time. A blow dryer will work just as well on high heat. I'm going to go ahead and run my heat over the area in which I applied the ammonium chloride. Now, although it doesn't seem like it's doing much now, it is very hot, especially when using a heating tool. 
And what I wasn't thinking about at the time was I just melted my wood tabletop surface. And so you can see that it is hot. These tools do work, but mm -hmm, I just burnt through my tabletop. We don't wanna do that. Alrighty, so yeah, this is probably what I should have done in the first place is put maybe a pot holder or some kind of a heating pad underneath this so I didn't burn the surface of my table, but lesson learned, that won't happen again. Now I'm gonna have to replace my tabletop. And for those of you who wanna know about the background of my table, it is a wallpaper. Actually, it is a poster paper that I got at Michael's that teachers use in their classrooms. And so you can use dry erase on it. And I do that because it's easy to clean up if I paint on it. And these come in about five foot rolls, which is amazing. And I buy several different ones, although you always see this background. Okay, so back to the DIY at hand here. You can see that I am running my heating tool over the area in which I applied the ammonium chloride, and you can see that it is then burning the wood. As I am doing it, I am seeing that the wood is not burning evenly. And I was also seeing that the burning area was bleeding outside of the lines of the house. I didn't paint those areas, but it was because I applied too much of the ammonium chloride, my brush was too wet, and it then made the wood bleed because the wood got saturated, absorbed the water, and it went outside the lines. Not the water, but the ammonium chloride. And so that is why when you're applying the ammonium chloride, you want to not have a saturated brush, you want to have a damp brush. And even if it takes a bit longer and you have to keep dipping your brush, you don't want it to be completely saturated. So that way when you do apply it, it stays in the area that you applied it to and it is not bleeding out of that area. And so here I thought that this Dollar Tree uh, box was going to be perfect, but as I'm doing it, I'm seeing that there's something weird about this wood that is not allowing it to burn evenly. And so here you can see the results of my first attempt. Not super happy. This wood has some kind of a sealant on it, which did not allow the ammonium chloride to absorb into those areas. So I'm going to say that this is a fail and this is not something that you should try to get that burnt look in. I think if you want to achieve that with something like this, you're going to have to use a paint. So for attempt number two, I decided to use one of these wood plaques, again by Crafter Square that Dollar Tree carries, and using one of these stencils by Folk Art. This comes in a 48 pack. These are really fun. You can get these at Walmart for about $5. Now when tracing your stencil onto your wood surface, you are going to want to use a pencil because when I used a pen and then I burnt my wood after the ammonium chloride was applied, you could still see the outline of the pen. I found that when I used a pencil, the pencil kind of disappeared and I had a much better outcome. So for this one, I decided to try an even thinner brush with a finer tip point to see if that was gonna make a difference. And so again, very sparingly, I'm gonna apply the ammonium chloride to the inside areas of my outline. Pretty quick on into this, when I was running the heat over it, I started to see that it was burning a lot more evenly, that it wasn't as patchy as the box was. I'm kind of feeling like maybe that box had some kind of a protectant or a sealant on the top of it where they did the punch out, and that was probably due to not wanting the wood to split or break when they did the punch out, and it made it a bit stronger. But with this plaque, there is no kind of sealant or protection on it. It's just the raw wood. And so again, I was seeing that it was burning a lot quicker, a lot more evenly. But again, I was seeing that there was more bleedage of the ammonium chloride. And I felt like I was very light handed when applying it. I applied it very sparingly, but I started to notice that the softer woods were absorbing more of the ammonium chloride in turn, which was making it go outside of my stencil lines. 
and I had even tried applying the ammonium chloride inside of the lines, anticipating that maybe it might bleed a bit more, and even doing it that way, it still had bleedage, which I found to be very frustrating because I just thought, wow, this would be a beautiful piece if I could just stop the bleedage. And so with this, I didn't continue burning it. The burn was even, but I could see that it was bleeding more, so I just kind of stopped and back to the drawing board I went. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I truly believe that. After doing a bit more research, I started seeing that harder woods do better with the ammonium chloride than softer woods because they don't absorb so much of the liquid. And so I'm going to use this cutting board that I found at Target's Dollar Spot for $3. These are amazing. And I was thinking if I can get this to work and I can burn a letter on it, then put some varnish over it or a sealant of some type, this would make for a pretty cool Christmas gift. I mean, really buying the ammonium, burning the wood, buying these cutting boards. It is such a budget friendly gift. It is personalized and who wouldn't love a personalized cutting board? Anybody would. And so because my last name is mm -hmm, Barlow, I'm going to go ahead and put this B from a Martha Stewart stencil or it might be a Waverly. Look at that. Let's see if this works. Fingers crossed. So this time, erring on the side of caution, I decided to dig into my brush stash and I found the thinnest, finest brush that I had and decided to use that. Again, I cannot convey to you enough if you try this, you do not want your brush saturated. When doing it, I found that if I applied the ammonium chloride just inside the line of my outline and then when my brush got a bit drier just went ahead and went over the line itself I had an almost perfect outcome and so when doing this you will see that the ammonium chloride kind of has that calcification look when it dries it might not come across too brightly over the camera but in person you can actually see where you've applied it where you haven't because it does dry rather quickly and when you are doing the heat if you happen to see areas that you missed you can stop with your heat and apply more of the ammonium chloride but really just kind of take your time because you are going to get an amazing outcome and did i say fingers crossed let's go ahead and run the heat over this and let's see how it turns out So I'm going to say third time was a charm. I am super happy with the outcome of this. I think with a bit more detailing, maybe adding some scrolling, then topping it off with some varnish, it would make for an amazing gift to give, a budget friendly gift to give this holiday season. I am so not done yet because I wanted to try another method that kind of piqued my curiosity and that's using one of these scorch pens that you can get on Amazon for about $20. Now, I will tell you that this was one of the initial methods that I had tried was this scorch pen because I had seen it on Amazon. I was super excited about it thinking like, wow, all I have to do is buy this pen and write on wood with it, go over it with a heat tool and I'm gonna have burnt wood, easy peasy. Wasn't super excited about the price point on it. I was thinking, wow, $20 is kind of a lot but I'm gonna give this a go. I'm gonna see how it works and if it's worth it. And so that is why I was trying it on this Dollar Tree wood plaque because initially when I tried this, I didn't know that the softer wood didn't work as well as the harder wood, but nonetheless, you will still see the outcome and I was still able to form my opinion about this scorch pen using this wood plaque, yeah. So I went ahead, I ordered one. This is how it arrived. And according to the directions, it says to give it a good shake before you use it. So I gave it a good shake 
and it, you can see that it's got one of those tips that as you push the tip in it expels the liquid and there are kind of paint pens that are like that too so if you push too hard on the tip more of the burning solution was expelled from this pen i found that the tip was very dry when outlining my stencil i found that it didn't do it very evenly some areas were thicker than others and it was really hard to control how even you were outlining or how even you were applying the solution from the pen and i'm saying solution because i'm not super clear what it is that is inside this pen i want to say it's got to be something very similar to the ammonium chloride but i could be wrong um and so i went ahead i gave this a fair go by outlining it with the pen then i went back in and colored it in because in some of the videos that i saw it said that you should outline first then color in and fill in the areas and so as i'm doing it it's looking like it's going fairly well until i started running the heat gun over it now i will tell you that i found that it turned colors quicker than the ammonium chloride did i liked that it was yellow so it was easier to see where you had applied it versus where you hadn't or where you had missed but again what i didn't like was the tip i didn't like the applicator tip because if you put just a bit too much pressure on it more of the fluid would expel and you couldn't really control that and so that wasn't something that i found that i liked and so um, I found it hard to use and I felt like it was very costly for the amount of fluid that you got in the pen. And so this here was my outcome. Again, there was bleedage, but I am going to attribute that to the softer wood. But you can see in some of the areas, it did come out cleaner than others. I just wish that the applicator itself was a bit easier to work with and it wasn't $20 per pen. Who does the KB Creations Crafter of the Day go to today? It goes to Claudia Hunter, who is bringing to us her version of the 4th of July tear tray. I am loving the spin and the twist that she put on it. Thank you, Claudia, for sharing your creation with us today. Guess what? Kayla's uploading today, and she is bringing to you Puppy Vlogs Week 2 with Winnie and Ibiza. So if you want to see how our pups are doing and how much they've grown, you'll want to head on over to Kayla's channel. You can find the link to today's video, guess where? In the description box below. Now how cool is that? This is such a cool way to get that same feel and effect as you would get burning wood with a flame, but you're not doing it that way at all. It's safe, it's easy, and really, I, I have no words. Now this may not be for some, if you're not into using chemicals, I feel like from the research that I did that this is safe to use. I love that this is a way that I can get that same effect without using a flame, and so this is a, technique that I will be incorporating every now and again and so you'll want to stay tuned for that. If you are interested in getting this ammonia chloride, you can find the link to it in my Amazon store in the description box below. You're going to pay $8.99 for a bag of it and when you buy that scorch pen you're paying $20 and honestly I found that it was just really hard to work with. To me, it wasn't user friendly, and I feel like for the amount that you get in one pen, $20 is a lot to pay for that. When you can pay $8.99 for the ammonia chloride, and you're gonna have this forever, like it's not gonna run out because two tablespoons of this makes a ton. And if you just store it in a nice tight container, you're gonna be able to use it and use it. And I still haven't used the first batch, and I still have the whole bag left. So I think it's a fun, easy way to do it. I hope you all enjoyed this hack and I hope you all are looking forward to some of the content that I will be bringing to you using this. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes, please. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, and bye for now, everybody.